So here's an interesting question from AJ. He wants to know if there's something that you always did during a tournament when you first started out that you never do now. Something that I always did. AJ, I'm coming up with nothing. <laughs> I mean, I really hadn't changed the way I fished, so there's really nothing that I was doing that I quit doing. Uh, I'm boring on that one, AJ. I got nothing. I, <laughs> I haven't changed really. You know, there's really nothing that I still try to keep it simple. I fish basically the same baits. I don't have many superstitions at all, so basically the same deal. Okay, well, belligerent. <laughs> That's the guy's name, belligerent. Okay. <laughs> Belligerent wants to know what mod uh, modifications or tweaking do you do to your baits? Uh, that just depends, you know, from changing hooks on lipless crankbaits to, you know, a little custom paint here and there to uh, several, you know, little stuff like that, tuning, buzz baits, making them make noise. Can you give any specific examples? Uh, yeah, I mean, it gets complicated. I mean, I, find, I sand wires, I grind blades, I turn pot rivets, stuff like that to make, to make different sound. Mostly just though, uh, n nothing really besides changing hooks is the biggest thing. Little, little tweaks here and there, from trimming skirts on jigs and stuff like that. So Redtail poses a really good question. If you're fishing a brand new body of water and you had no electronics, no maps, nothing of the sort, and you could only bring three baits, what would what might those be? <laughs> well, if I'd never seen the lake, could no maps, no nothing, I could only bring three baits. It'd probably be stuff to beat the bank with, you know, spinner bait. Uh, I take a shallow crank bait and I take a spinner bait probably uh, something to flip with, you know, uh, probably pitching a little 3 8 ounce jig and throwing a little half ounce double Colorado spinnerbait, uh, a little Lucky Craft RC 1.5, because I know without all that stuff, I'm just basically going to beat the bank and fish what I can see. So those three would probably do it the whole day. Doesn't matter what time of year? Nah, beat the bank. Be a bank, old bank beater. Man, I don't know nothing about it. I just beat their ash in the bank. Well, Row Your Boat asks, what's the most common mistake you see the average angler make? Most common mistake. Hmm. Not paying enough attention to detail. You know. Uh, not fishing the obvious stuff, not, not paying attention to the pattern, really paying attention to what the fish is telling them. You know, that's what I see most of the time. Not looking at all the conditions and taking all that in consideration. They're just fishing old places that they like to fish. So what do you feel is your, your biggest mistake as a pro angler? Uh, usually finding too many places to fish, getting too strung out. You know, locating fish all over the lake and then trying to sort out where to fish so you get a little, sometimes you get a tendency to be a little bum puzzled. Bum puzzled? Bum puzzled, just <laughs> really not knowing which direction to go. Don't use these technical terms on it, man. Okay. I get, I get lost big, on it real quick. Big ones there, wasn't it? Bass and Bob 54 wants to know, what's it like to fish against KVD? And is it hard to stay focused knowing that he's gunning for you? KVD, fishing against KVD. It's a lot like having VD. It just kind of burns a lot. You can't hardly get rid of it. It's what it's like fishing against KVD, you know. I call him VD. <laughs> he gets all been out of shape, but it is what it is. Tough. He uh, 
really no different than the rest of them. I mean, he makes it count a lot of times, but if they bite mine, I'll make it count too. So you just try not to look at that. You're not fishing against him as much as the field. and Just watch it, it'll burn when you pee. <laughs> That's KVD. <laughs> There's one, I don't know how serious this is. I think this guy's giving you a hard time here. So I think he deserves a little back. He goes by the name of Randy's Breath. He wants to know is, is if the sting is worn off yet from the beating Luke Claussen gave you from using a sissy rod on the ultimate ah. match fishing. I wouldn't say it's gone. I mean, when you're fishing you get somebody you don't even really like and sitting in the back of the boat and you ain't even got nowhere to throw, Getting beat ain't no fun. I didn't like him before I started, and I still don't like him. So I say the sting is gone, but it don't change how I feel. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're, uh, you're you're known for your practical jokes. I'm sure you know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, do you happen to have any particular ones that you're you're fond of, or that you, any recent ones you want to share with us that uh, went off particularly well? Uh. I hadn't really pulled any this year or anybody. I hadn't been around a lot of guys, but you know, outside of the living the dream show stuff that you can watch online, you know, get the guy to drink a bunch of energy drinks and stuff like that. I hadn't, this winter I've been kind of dormant. I'm just waiting on my chance, you know. Probably pull a good one on VD or Skeet before the year's over, but there's been many. There's been many. Any, any uh, ones come to mind that? I paid a hooker to go up and hit on Kelly Jordan one time. That was kind of funny. <laughs> Cost me 50 bucks. She was all over him. Tell him she'd read about him in Bassmasters magazine. I'd done filled the whole deal in. And I mean, it was, it was worth all 50 of it. Easiest 50 she ever made. <laughs> it's kind of fun. That's just what we do. So if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Any superpower? Uh, bionic eyes? I don't know. Uh, I've always wanted the power to pick the woods up and look under them so I could see where the deer were and then walk over and kill them. <laughs> I've said it many times and wished I could just superpower the trees up and look under and find the deer, but hadn't worked yet, but that's the superpower I would want ability to remove the brush where I can see the animal. And then he couldn't hide. I could kill them all. So when you're pre-fishing a body of water, what um, what kind of things are you trying to accomplish? Uh, you, know, you know. And then how do you go about doing that? I got one rule of thumb in practice. I try to get in an area that I feel like it's got the most fish in it that's easiest for me to catch. And then that's where I spend my time in the tournament. I go all over the place. When it's said and done, I'm gonna go right back to the area that I feel like I may not have had the most bites, but I had bites in there and it got the best indication that's the most fish in there. Once I do that, that's where I'll be. You know, yeah, you want to find a pattern and all that, but there's always key areas. Do you spend more time? fishing or uh, looking at your depth finder, running around? It just depends. All that stems on type of tournaments. You know, Kentucky Lake, you look more at your depth finder. Here, you spend more time fishing. You know, so it's a, it's a mix due to how the lakes are or time of year. But, you know, if it's an offshore tournament, yeah, I'll spend hours and hours and hours just depth looking and looking, not even fishing. Bank beating tournament, put the trolling motor down, just go. You know, try to cover as much water as we can. Oh, I got something. I got something on you, boss. And it's a striper, and I have found a school of them, and I'm going to catch every one of them. Oh, it's a home like soup bone now. I don't care. There's a thousand of them down there. I've seen them on the deep meter. Oh, he bit my tail off. Look at that little gerbil head. Deck gummy. <clears throat> I've done that a many, many times, brother. Throw back in there and catch a four pound spot. <laughs>